Hi everyone, welcome to 4A Transform class on Frequency Shifting Property. In today's class, we will be seeing an important property of Fourier transform which is frequency shifting. So what does frequency shifting do? The frequency shifting takes the Fourier transform and shifts it along the frequency axis. So you have Ft of Xn, the Fourier transform of your signal X of n is equal to X of k. The frequency shifting property states that if you take X of n, multiply it with e to the power of j omega 0 n and take its combined Fourier transform, you get a shifted frequency spectrum. The frequency spectrum is shifted by an amount equal to k0 which is contained in e to the power of j omega 0 n. As you can see here, e to the power of j omega 0 n where omega 0 is equal to 2 pi by n k 0 n. This k 0 here is what represents your shift index. This is our Fourier transform equation x of k is equal to sigma x of n exponential minus 2 pi j k n by n. We have seen this. We'll be using this to prove the frequency shifting property. So how much shift in frequency? That is the next question and I already told you it is k naught which is obtained from omega naught. So the shift in frequency is given by omega naught here and that is your k naught. So what we see here is when we take the Fourier transform of x of n into e to the power of j omega n on the equation side your x of n gets substituted with x of n e to the power of j omega 0 n and then the omega 0 n gets substituted into 2 pi by n k 0 n and 2 pi by n k of n. So from this equation when we group similar exponentials we end up getting e to the power of j 2 pi k 0 k minus k 0 into n by n. And now this on the right hand side what you have is not the Fourier transform of x of k it represents it no longer represents the Fourier transform of x of k but it represents now your Fourier transform x of k minus k0 which is your frequency shifted Fourier transform and that is also your proof for the frequency shifting property. So it's just a four step proof you need to remember uh, just substitute x of n with e to the power of j omega 0 n and then group the exponential, take the common terms and then rewrite the Fourier transform with x of k minus k0 since this represents the Fourier transform for x of k minus k0. Good. So that is about the property. Now let us see an example of a frequency shifting property which will make it more clear to understand the derivation we have seen. Let us take a sinusoid which is having six cycles per second. So the sinusoid shown here is having six cycles in one second which means its frequency is six. So ideally a Fourier transform of this signal will have a peak at 6 since the frequency of my sinusoid is 6. Now what we are going to do is we are going to apply the frequency shifting property to this signal with 6 cycles and now for the frequency shifting property I am going to use a 3 shift signal that is I am going to multiply it with e to the power of j 3 into 2 pi n. So the 2 pi n is important because we need the 2 pi n for periodicity. So my shift or the k0 here is only 3. So multiplying it with e to the power of j 3 into 2 pi n will shift the Fourier transform from position 6 by 3 places to position 9. So this is frequency shifting property. 
how does this happen so the uh, the example shows us what is frequency shifting and how it is applied to a cost signal now how does this happen the answer lies in the euler formula so the euler formula states that a sinusoid signal can be expressed as the sum of complex exponential complex being e to the power of j theta so now your cos theta is written as half of e to the power of j theta plus e to the power of minus j theta so this is your euler formula now what i am going to do is the six cycle per second example i am writing it as cos of 6 of 2 pi n 2 pi n for the periodicity or the full cycle and 6 is the number of cycles so you have six full cycles that is what the 6 into 2 pi n means so for the six full cycles i am going to have the euler formula in this manner so this is my euler formula given here and for that frequency shift by three units i am going to multiply this signal cos 6 into 2 pi n with e to the power of j 3 2 pi n so this is the frequency shifting here so this this is what exactly we saw this is going to shift my fourier transform by three units so i'm multiplying that with this cos signal and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to apply the euler form for cos 6 of 2 pi n and then i'm going to again group the exponentials the common exponentials and see what i end up getting so i'm going to represent my cos of 6 of 2 pi n by the euler formula and i'm going to multiply it with the frequency shift exponential so grouping the exponential i am ending up getting this term minus j 3 and plus j9 so here what it shows is i'm gonna get a frequency after applying the frequency shifting i'm gonna end up getting frequency at minus 3 and plus 9 that is what this term represents but we don't take the negative frequency so we are plotting the fourier spectrum we are plotting the fourier transform in the positive frequency so since there is no negative time, we are not talking about negative frequency. So let's just ignore the negative frequency, which means I am getting this position 9 from the derivation. So the negative frequency is not considered and only the positive frequency, which means my original Fourier transform, which was at position 6, is now shifted itself to position 9 because I have applied the frequency shifting property. Let's now take big jump as a small jump in frequency. Big jump represents jumps which are in integer multiples and small jump represents fractional multiples. For an example, for the same cost signal, if we multiply it with a 4 shift exponential, your Fourier transform shifts from position 6 to position 10. So this big shifts can be used when you want, say, go from a broad, one broadcast station to another broadcast station frequency. A small shift in frequency is intended for fine tuning within the same broadcast station. So here you have J1 by 10, so which is going to give you a very small shift from 6 to 6.1. So both are useful and the same frequency shifting derivation and the property that we have seen in Fourier transform is used in both these applications.
Where can it be used? So let us see one application example before we close this class. Let us say we have a movie which is produced by a studio and this movie is proprietary at frequency F1. So let us say the movie, movie is not at frequency F1 but the movie is transmitted at frequency F1. And now you have a broadcast frequency spectrum. So there are a lot of channels that are interested in showcasing this movie. Star Movies is one such channel and it is licensed to operate at F2 as per the government norms. So now what it needs to do, it needs to, it has purchased this movie and now that movie is at F1. Using frequency shifting, it can easily broadcast the movie at F2. So we are talking about transmission and reception of movies, not the movie frequency. So it is something, you know, it's not to be confused with the frequency of the movie because the movie is going to be the same. So if I'm going to watch, say, the movie X, the movie X is going to be the movie X, but it is going to be telecast in different channels. So star movies, you have HBO and then you have movies now. So different channels can telecast the same movies but they have to do it in their operational frequency which is not the same as the movie production frequency. So the movie which is produced and released by the studio will be at a different frequency and your channel you can showcase it on their telecast at their operational frequency by using the property that we have just seen. Thank you for listening for today's class. We'll be back with more.